Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University. So in this video, I wanted to go over um, a bunch of resources that you can use in order to get started as a blockchain developer. So if you are on my email list or you ever visit my website, um, you might have seen this before already. Um, this is you know, a complete blockchain developers resource list and it's supposed to be kind of everything that you need to know in order to get started. So what I'm gonna do today is kind of go down this list. It's really long, so I'm gonna do like a kind of a lightning talk on blow by blow by blow about the, really the high points of the resources and you know, kind of everything that you would need to know in order to get started. Because that's what I made this list for, sort of be a comprehensive reference that you can go back to whenever you are looking for a tool or an answer to something you might want to know how to do. So before we do that, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Um, and uh, smash the like button down below because that really helps these videos get found so that more people can learn to become blockchain developers and help build out this ecosystem so that we can all benefit from doing that in the long run. All right, so oh, also I mentioned you know uh, about emailing this out. So if you wanna join my email list, you can over my website at dappuniversity.com. I actually give you access to downloading um, some of my courses for free. Just go over to dappuniversity.com and click free download. So anyways, let's get started. So there's a lot to cover here. So I'm gonna do this kind of fast. Um, I'm gonna use this article as a reference point. We've got a table of contents here. Um, you can learn about developer tools, uh, what you need to know in order to build the dApps, uh, blogs, podcasts, books, newsletters, even how to get a job, um, events and conferences and things like that. So let's, let's just go quickly. Um, so the first thing are like the frameworks that you would use in order to build smart contracts um, and you know blockchain applications. The first one is one I've used a lot on this channel. It's um, the Truffle framework. So Truffle's kind of been my bread and butter that I use um, to build smart contracts. It's really good. Any of my major um, tutorials use it. Just check those out. You can see all the people that are using Truffle. It's a big deal. Um, other is the Embark framework, which is uh, another smart contract framework that's put out by Status. It also supports uh, IPFS integration and things like that. Um, so Status also is a mobile Ethereum wallet and browser, if, if you aren't familiar. You can check out the Status project, it's really cool. I know, I know some of the people over there. Um, so yeah, Embark's awesome. You can go and play with that, around with that as well. So let's see, the next thing is, so there's some other uh, frameworks here. Uh, like Dapp, Populous, Etalime, and Clickbait. Uh, Clickbait actually allows you to like containerize uh, proof of authority nodes and things like that. It's pretty cool, check that out. So smart contract programming languages. So Solidity is the main one. That's the one I teach most on this channel um, because it's the most mature as far as Ethereum goes. Um, you can watch any of my tutorials where I build smart contracts. I use Solidity. You can read the Solidity documentation here. There's also Viper, which is an experimental programming language for writing smart contracts on Ethereum. It's still pretty new, so I don't use it very much. If you're interested in learning about Viper, just leave a comment down in the comment section below. So let's see, what else is next? There's some other languages like Bamboo and LLL. Um, you can check those out if you're interested. So IDE editors and plugins. Um, Remix IDE is uh, almost essential if you want to learn how to build smart contracts with Ethereum. Basically, it allows you to uh, write Ethereum smart contracts in your browser. You don't have to install developer tools. You can just you know write your smart contract code, you can compile them, you can run them, you can deploy them to uh, a public Ethereum network, you can deploy them to a test network uh, in, actually in the browser. Um, you can deploy them to the main Ethereum network. It's a really useful tool, and it's a tool actually put out and maintained by you know, the Ethereum organization themselves. So there's lots of other ones here. There's ETH Fiddle, which is really similar to like JS Fiddle, if you've ever seen that before. Um, basically allows you to write like you know smart contract code inside your browser and share it socially and things like that and run it. Um, there's a lot on this list, and I don't think I can go through all of them. Um, but yeah, check those out. So it's test blockchains. Like, so if you want to run smart contracts on a blockchain or just like write an app that talks to a blockchain, you probably want to use a local copy of a blockchain to develop things. Um, so Ganache is the one that I use the most. Um, that's also put out by Truffle, the smart contract framework. 
So Ganache is like a local in-memory blockchain, and it's got like a, a, a GUI client. You can you know do a one-click install and a one-click run, and it pulls up like a graphical client. Or you can run it as a command line version and just you know run Ganache from your command line. I, I do that a lot in some of my tutorials. I do both. Um, but yeah, check that out. Ganache is awesome. So some of the other uh, you know local networks you can see here, like local Raiden, um, check those out. So test Ether faucet. So why, what is this and why is it important? So a test, so a faucet is basically something that dispenses Ether. So when you're writing smart contracts and deploying them to a, a test network, basically you need a way to get fake Ether um, on something like, you know, Rinkeby test network or like Kovan. Those are proof of authority test networks. So you can't be a miner. You can't mine Ethereum yourself. So you have to get it from somewhere. And a faucet is basically a smart contract that allows you to request Ether funds and it'll just give it to you. And it'll do that for free because the Ether on the test networks isn't actually worth anything. So these are the uh, Rinkeby faucet, Kovan faucet, and Robston faucet. Um, so other ones are like Ethereum clients. This is another big thing. So what's an Ethereum client? Ethereum client is an implementation of um, basically an Ethereum node. Um, and you can do it through a bunch of different ways. Like Geth is one that I used a lot on this channel. It's the Go implementation of Ethereum with Golang. Um, there's Parity, which is the Parity Ethereum client. It's another big one put out by Parity Technologies. You can actually just click the links to these. See them here, like Geth and Parity. So those are the two main ones. Um, there's a lot of other ones that I've listed here that you can kind of go down and read about them and see them, you know, kind of in depth. All right, the next thing are JavaScript APIs, which is a big deal if you're trying to write applications that talk to the blockchain. And the, the main one's Web3.js. And that's the main JavaScript client that you use to interact with the Ethereum blockchain. It's one that I've used a lot. Um, it's you know included in the other smart contract test, short, sorry, smart contract frameworks like Truffle. Um, actually, Truffle.js is written on top of Web3.js. And Web3.js basically is just like a JavaScript implementation that allows you to talk to Ethereum nodes and perform actions on the blockchain uh, through that node. So you can watch any of my tutorials. I've actually got a series on Web3.js where I show you how to use it. You can check that out if you want to. Um, so there's other implementations of Web3 and other languages like Web3 uh, for Python and PHP, which I've listed here on this site. Um, you can check those out if, if you're more comfortable with other languages, um, rather than JavaScript, like say if you wanted to run, you know, a process on a server that talks to Ethereum, you could do that with another language like Python. If you wanted to write a Django app or something that talks to Ethereum, you could do that. Same thing with PHP. Um, so some other things that are good to know about are the bootstrapping tools. So this is like truffle boxes are a good example. What if you wanted to build a React application with React JS that talks to an Ethereum smart contract? Well, the truffle boxes are a really good way to go because you can create a project quickly that has React already built into it, React and Webpack. And it gives you a way to like talk to the smart contracts and go ahead and start building the smart contracts and try to create them. That's one big thing about JavaScript, you know, is you have to kind of configure everything yourself if you wanted to build a React app, like you can configure Webpack and everything. And this has kind of got all that started for you. So you can just get ready to go. You can see the React box, the Drizzle box, um, React authentication, things like that. Okay, so what else can we see? There's smart contract libraries. Open Zeppelin is a big one. So the reason libraries are so important with um, Ethereum is the smart contract code is immutable. So if you want to build something like a token, I would use a library in production, like to start, to start building. I mean, you want to write your own custom behavior and things like that, your own custom attributes, but libraries are a really good way to get started because these libraries are community vetted. Like a bunch of people have come together and said, yes, this is secure. We can use this. 
Um, so Open Zeppelin Solidity is a really good example of that. It's also a really good place to go learn how to like just write good code. You can see all kinds of good examples. If you want to learn how to write tests for smart contracts, just go to the testing directory and look at you know any of these tests. It's really good. Uh, it's just it's good. I, I would go there and learn that. All right, so let's see what else. Um, lots of other libraries. If you want to build an exchange, you can go look at the 0x protocol. Um, let's see here. So storage. So this is a big deal. How do you store files in the blockchain? Well, IPFS is a big one. That's one I've talked about a lot on this channel. So that IPS is a peer-to-peer -peer storage network for files, kind of like a blockchain. And here's a reference about how you use it. So you can check out some of my tutorials where I show you how to use IPFS. Also Swarm and some others here that I've listed, so you can check those out. So messaging, so Whisper is a decentralized messaging protocol. Basically it's designed for, initially designed for DAP communication, at least that's what they talk about at Ethereum. Um, but what it does is some people start building like chat clients with Whisper where you can talk over the blockchain in real time. So Whisper is something that's cool that you can check out along with some of these other um, protocols. That's why I listed it under messaging because that's what people are using Whisper for. Um, I believe Status is actually using Whisper um, with their mobile browser to do chats. So other things like ecosystem tools, like wallets, like here's all the wallets you need to know. Like MetaMask is the one I use a lot for development where I can you know, sign transactions but actually hold cryptocurrency, hold Ether or like ERC20 tokens and send them back and forth. There's also uh, like Gnosis, which is a multi-signature wallet. And what you use that for is basically like, <clears throat> excuse me, if you, if you needed multiple people to authorize a transaction, you would use a multi-signature wallet. So let's say you had an ICO and you raised $100 million. Um, well, if you want to withdraw those funds, Sometimes you don't want one person to have the authority to do that. So you would use a multi-signature process in order for multiple people to sign off on the distribution of those funds. That's really a security thing, you know, if, if multiple people have to agree on something to do at the same time in order to authorize a transaction, that's what you use a multi-signature wallet for. And you can see all kinds of other... Um, uh, wallets here and, and browsers like Mist, uh, things like that. My Ether Wallet, My Crypto. These are all things you can access through your browser. Mobile wallets like Trust Wallet, um, Coinbase Wallet, Status, um, things like that. Hardware wallets, Trezor, Ledger. Some other cool tools here are uh, the block explorers like Etherscan. Etherscan is the big one. This is how you go kind of look up any of the transactions on the Ethereum blockchain. You can learn about uh, any of the block, all kinds of data. Anything you want to know about Ethereum, just go to Etherscan. You can find uh, that info. It's also got support for test networks. You can go to like, uh, you know, oops, like Kovan, kovan.etherscan.io, right? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So gas price tools. So a lot of times when you're working with Ethereum, you need to understand the gas prices. That determines the network conditions. It determines how long it's gonna take for things to happen on Ethereum. And this calculator is really useful because it allows you to answer questions like how long should I expect for my cryptocurrency to arrive in my wallet based upon this gas price or this gas, you know, things like, or gas limit. What gas limit do I need to set you know, it's always the same for a trans, like a, just a basic transaction, but if you want to deploy a smart contract, you might want to estimate your gas usage and your gas costs, because I mean, it costs money to deploy a smart contract to uh, the main Ethereum network, and you might want to use a tool like this in order to, to figure that out. All right, so I know video's going kind of long, but there's a lot of stuff to, to know here. I was kind of blow by blow go through this stuff. I've hit a lot of the concepts. There's a lot of tutorials and reference. Um, I put a lot of my own tutorials at the top because, well, I, I, I think that they're good and the good resources. Um, so I've listed those here. There's um, other tutorials about like the parody wallet hack, like there's stories about uh, 
things that have happened in the past in blockchain, like big security things that made everyone scared. There's like tutorials about how that happened. Um, even tutorials about stuff that I haven't talked about much, like cryptographic hashing and how that works and like Merkle trees and Merkle proofs. So you can check that out on this list as well. There's Ethereum official links, like the Ethereum white paper and the Ethereum yellow paper. Those are things that are really good to reference as a blockchain programmer because it'll give you a much better understanding of like how Ethereum works and how the blockchain works. Some other blogs that I like to follow, um, like Vitalik, Vitalik's blog, you know, the creator of Ethereum. Um, there's lots on here that I've listed, and you can go check those out. Podcasts on here, like uh, the ones that I do on my channel, also like Block Channel, this is one I'm pretty um, fond of. Let's see here, DAP Discovery Tools. Um, I think I mentioned that in another video. You can go look about like what DAPs are out there. You can look like DAP Radar, when I showed before. You can see all the uh, games and things like that that are on Ethereum. Also, some other DAP discovery websites from people that I know, like uh, DAP um, Volume. You might have seen Chris on my channel before. Um, it's a similar kind of DAP discovery tool. There's also like DAP.com, uh, which I've got some articles on there. Uh, another good resource for you guys to check out if you want to. All right, there's books. There's Mastering Ethereum. Um, building Ethereum dApps. This is, just go look at this list. It's all great. Discussion forums, self-explanatory, great way to ask questions, get answers, events and conferences. A great place to go if you want to meet people who are building on the blockchain and also just learn from straight from the source. Like there's really great presenters there. Um, also getting a job. Here are ways to get jobs as a blockchain developer. You can get jobs at, you know, crypto startup. That's really a great way because, I mean, most companies in crypto are startups. Like, they just didn't exist before because this is a new uh, space. And, yeah, it's a big startup culture. Um, Ethereum jobs, AngelList, all kinds of websites that are here uh, where you can go look at listings. Yeah, Ethereum jobs. Here's, like, all listings. Java engineer. Ethereum blockchain writer. It's not just for developers. There's all kinds of things that you can look at. There's, uh, you know, AngelList is a really good resource for this as well. All right, so that's an overview of all the resources that are contained on this list. I also answer lots of questions that I'm not going to go through here, so I don't want to bore you. But I wanted to give you the blow by blow of all the resources that are on this list and kind of give you an example of like why they're important and what you can do with them. So I hope you liked that. Um, leave me a question down in the comment section below if you have one. And also be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And like I said, smash the like button because that really helps these videos out. It helps them get discovered. Um, so thanks again for watching. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.